Hi, uh, this is Dr. Kang's scuba diving story. Today's story is about hypertension and diving. Uh, when someone over 45 of years of age go to a dive station and ask for a class, they will probably give you a medical statement and in there there is a some uh, line like uh, a 45 or over and then there are the sub lines like hypertension diabetes um, so if you check on 45 and hypertension probably the instructor will ask you to go to um, some doctor and get uh, the permission. Uh, hypertension is a pretty uh, complicated disease but a lot of people have hypertension so a lot of divers have hypertension just like myself. So I want to cover briefly on uh, hypertension and the possible standard or criteria for a hypertensive person to keep on participating in diving activity. Uh, hypertension, what is hypertension definition? And it is called the silent killer, why? And then I uh, will see how hypertension and diving can be connected. This is a uh, pretty old chart showing what is the normal our uh, excuse me uh, normal blood pressure what is a uh, hypertension and it has like a uh, stage one two three but those uh, I have no intention to cover but it used to be a uh, normal was like a uh, 120 uh, over 80 it's the same yet but when you say hypertension, it's like uh, 130 over 80. This is new American Heart Association's definition from uh, 2017. And this made a lot of people hypertensive patients. Uh, it looks like a European Heart Association or whatever seemed very unhappy with these numbers uh, 130 over 80 and uh, it's because probably 50% of adult population now are hypertensive uh, there certainly is a lot of people even in Korea with this new criteria there's more than 10 million people with hypertension. Uh, it's over 50% of senile people. So, but still, the point of American Heart Association, it's better we consider it a serious disease and when it is 130 over 80, start whatever you can do. Medication, probably we can wait, but still we have to be very careful about the diet and take some exercise. So, if we all agree with these numbers, 130 over 80, probably it is easier for us to prevent the worst complication of the hypertension. Here are some uh, interesting uh, statistics. Uh, 90, uh, excuse me, 69 percent of first heart failure were hypertensive. 77 percent of a first stroke patient, 74 of chronic heart failure were hypertensive. Uh, in U.S. in 2009, there were 348,000 people died of hypertension. That's a lot, isn't it? Um, this uh, really surprised me. The medical cost regarding uh, hypertension 
it was even for me yeah you know, this even uh, this was even difficult for me to understand how much it was like 47.5 billion dollar per year it's a lot of money isn't it um, so maybe maybe for insurance medical insurance if they spend a little more money on teaching people how to take care of this probably they will spend much much less money so but still there's another statistic which is uh, just a little less than 50 percent 40 47 percent of hypertensive patients they are not under control so which means more than half are still not being controlled control medication control diet less sodium um, in Korea we have a very good food named kimchi and it is very salty um, there is some controversy on that food which I cannot live without. 30% um, of the whole world population now is hypertensive. Okay, it is called a silent killer because for a long time you live with hypertension without the symptoms. So until the disease really gets very bad, until it complicates many other major organs, you just live with it so once you have the symptom that means you're in a very serious uh, condition already that's why we call it silent killer you find out that you have hypertension you have to take care of it you have to do something uh, people hate to begin to eat or take uh, medication because it is a medication you know it's a drug they don't like to take it you don't want to take it okay go ahead don't take it but you have to take good exercise uh, preferably uh, uh, aerobic exercise and uh, diet in Korea we have uh, some really good food like kimchi we also have a bean curd soup which is um, also very salty uh, and spicy um, they have uh, some good part for sure but still they are so salty and it's a uh, we certainly need to do something about that so by the time the symptoms shows out severe complications already might be there uh, what about uh, diving? <clears throat> Hypertensive divers can dive if blood pressure is under control, which means 120 over 80, 10 minutes after rest. Um, you can't take your blood pressure after uh, of a few miles, you know, after running, even walking. So. Whenever you check your pressure, you have to take a good rest, minimum for 10 minutes. And then uh, most hypertensive drugs, they are okay with diving. They don't really give you any um, neurologic uh, sequelae. You know. But uh, long-term patient, if you were hypertensive for many, many, many years, then you must check for secondary complication to your major organs including heart, liver, um, lungs, you know. A routine and frequent checkup is also necessary if you want to dive and the complication of a disease and complication of the treatment didn't really bother your major organs 
So uh, to participate in diving, let me conclude. Uh, you should have 120 over 80 or below. It's a normal blood pressure. Now, and there should be no complication of the disease and no complication of the treatment. Uh, you must keep taking medication. You must uh, keep on taking good diet and taking good exercise. Uh, and we can have a very good time underwater. Uh, today's topic was hypertension and diving. And uh, hypertensives, we can dive. Thank you.